Now it's a long and cold winter here across Canada, but in this video today, I'm going to break, break down the top five stories you guys might have missed in the CPL off season. All right here in this video, I'm going to break them all down, all down for you. So stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Curtis here and you're watching my channel, AFC Curtis, your home for all things Canadian Premier League content right here on YouTube. So if you're new here, maybe consider hitting that red subscribe button. All right, so the first thing here I want to touch on, and it's not really a news article that per se came out, but it's just the transparency and the whole CPL and the PFA can kind of working together somewhat. And to touch on this a little bit more here, uh, to talk about it is we've had people talk about from the CPL's head office that they are going to start discussing starting, I believe, this season or this even this coming or this past off season, uh, start talking with PFA Canada about some kind of union um, working with the CPL league. So there's some progress in that, which is great because we're all for players union here in Canada for the Canadian Premier League and as Canadian players. Uh, but on top of that, more transparency is another thing here in this big news that I want to share with you guys. That I've noticed this off season um, if you look at any of the player signings pretty much across the league they've all given us some more transparency in the past couple of years before in the past you signed oh we're signing this player this is it you know we're, this is some stats they have that's it that's all they give us or even last one or two off seasons now they've been saying oh sometimes they might say it's a multi-year deal and that's about it but multi-year can be you know two three four years five years whatever it is not exactly giving us the term and maybe we don't want to know necessarily how much money they're making okay who cares but I think for me I I definitely like to know how long a player is signed for for a club at least and if they maybe have anything like a club option on there and this offseason pretty much every club in the CPL uh, as far as I can remember uh, has given us that they've given us how much uh, how long the contract is in terms of years as well as if there's a club option there and so for that I thank you guys for that at least for giving us a little bit more transparency and it's fun it's cool and it allows us the fans to know when we go to the game we can start being more invested in some players because we know they're gonna be here beyond just the one season all right so the next thing I want to talk about here uh, and the number two story you might have missed this off season here is uh, former commissioner David Klanikin. That's right, I said former commissioner David Klanikin, who ended up back in January of 2022, stepped down as commissioner of the CPL and uh, in turn has also been rewarded with the CPL expansion rights for the city of Windsor, Ontario there, which I think Windsor would be a pretty cool market to have a CPL club, especially right on that border close to the US of A. They can probably get some spillover uh, attendance in there too, which would be pretty neat. Um, either way though, I think it's great that the city of Windsor has somebody that's interested in bringing a CPL club there and having someone with a business savvy of David Klanikin, who even has the nose people obviously in the inner workings now of the CPL there, I'm sure could help, definitely help. He did say though when he was stepping down uh, and he got the rights and he did a quick interview from there that it will take a couple of years though before we do see a CPL club kick a ball in the city of Windsor there. So I'm thinking maybe 2025, 2026 for this one here. But that's big news article number two. All right, so the next big news article here I want to talk about is the coaching changes across the CPL. I mean, there's going to be coaching changes every year, but this offseason has seen quite a lot. Of, I believe this is the biggest uh, turnover in terms of coaching changes this offseason here. Uh, starting with York United there, they lost Jimmy Brennan there, which is um, I was really shocked when they announced that Jimmy Brennan was out as coach of York United, considering he was able to take a club that everyone thought was going to finish last place and get them to finish in the top four in the playoffs. So he did a great job there. He leaves on the way in to replace him is former Cavalry FC assistant coach Martin Nash, which I think is a great appointment there. I think he's ready for that next step to become a head coach uh, in the Canadian Premier League here. And this is going to be a great team that he has at his disposal with so many good young pieces there. Uh, I'm excited for him. I'm sure he's definitely excited too. Uh, the other thing, big piece here of news, still Ontario here. Uh, as of this recording, we don't know his replacement yet, but Mista has left as head coach of Atletico Ottawa yet. So um, that one, I'm kind of a little bit surprised. I thought they would maybe give him a third year considering you know, first year was kind of a write-off at the Island Games and he didn't have a huge ton of time to build that team from the ground up. 2021, you can't really have any complaints saying that he didn't have time. He definitely had a long off season before last year to build his club. And I thought it was a better club, although they did finish last place. So maybe this isn't as surprising, but anyway, Misa out in Ottawa. And then the final big coaching change, at least as of this video, of course, is over on the West Coast. The defending champs, Paul Maduka is 
out as Pacific FC head coach and replacing him there's of course no better replacement right now I think than James Merriman a guy who's been there since day one as an assistant coach as assistant GM now taking over as the lead there in Pacific FC here so he's got a great squad there that he can form in his own image now moving forward as defending champs uh, but those are the big head coaching changes this offseason speaking though of Pacific FC here my next story number four here of the five uh, is Pacific FC is dismantling. I mean, they're the champs. They won the championship last year. They're in CONCACAF League starting this summer. You think that they would be adding rather than subtracting. And the fact they've got like really lost a lot of pieces. They lost Pamadou Ka uh, to the MLS uh, next pro league there, which, you know, that, I think that was a big shot. Although James Merriman, I think, is going to be a good replacement for him there at that head coaching job. He knows everybody. He knows the system. Like I said, he was a day one guy even before, before Pa got there. So he's been pretty big in that club. So I'm not too worried about that. But in terms of the on-the-field production, uh, I was going through the list before this video, and I believe it was something like five of the 18 players that were drafted for that CPL final game is now gone from the CPL's uh, Pacific FC champs here. Bassett's gone. You got uh, Taron Campbell, which was a huge loss when the rivals for FC. Alessandro uh, Hadrapour there, the U21 player of the year in 2021. He's gone to your rivals for FC as well. You lose Caden Chung, the Toronto FC. You lose on a free transfer as far as I know. And then you lose your top center back there and Lucas McNaughton, one of the best center backs in the league, by the way, I would say from last year, going as well to Toronto FC. At least you did get a little bit of a transfer fee uh, from him there. But still, that's a lot of huge losses. Yeah, you got some additions there, but those are some pretty big, big uh, shoes to fill in terms of on the fit on the pitch production and let's just hope they get a healthy Marco Bustos to maybe boost their chances of repeating as champs. And then finally the last story here to touch on is a, a fairly big one. It was announced back New Year's Eve um, just past this just this past winter there that uh, FC Edmonton uh, have been transferring their ownership over or did transfer over their ownership to the league the Canadian Premier League there so the fats are out they're not the owners anymore uh, for FC Edmonton they are are now looking for new owners as they're currently being owned by the CPL while well, they're looking for owners. Uh, I believe I heard some rumors there on Reddits, but again, take it as a grain of salt, but potentially Edmonton Elk could be interested in picking them up and adding them their port to their portfolio. But either way, this is not a great thing. You don't want this, you don't want to see this. And you know, I think it's well documented, especially last season about FC Edmonton and just you know not having a great turnout in terms of attendance. They had less than a thousand average last year in a pandemic year, granted. Uh, but still, it's it's not a great site. You don't want to see this. I definitely don't want to see this. And I really hope somebody does uh, come up, hopefully sooner rather than later, to pick up the ownership here for FC Edmonton. All right, so that was the five big off-season stories right here in this video. Have I, did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, guys, if you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up, that like button. Shows me like content like this. And of course, share the knowledge and help me grow my channel, please. I appreciate it. Every share, uh, very helpful. Um, so definitely hit that share button if you want to share this content to someone that's a CPL fan that you know, I definitely do that. Uh, as well as if you haven't subscribed already, definitely hit that red subscribe button and that bell notification button there, uh, just so you can get notified each and every week when I drop a brand new video just like this one about the CPL. And until next time, guys, we'll see you later.